everybody. This one is do-it-yourself self-inflicted problems. All of our problems are self-inflicted. Okay? And so let's learn why. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants uh, for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forums. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. And donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the commercial papers, the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders, etc. Send me an email for our particulars. <clears throat> Anyways, kangaroo courts are everywhere. All of our problems are self-inflicted. Either you're the king or you're a slave. There's nothing else. If you go into commerce, then you're a slave. You can do common law contracts and not be in commerce. Uh, this is Clearfield Trust Company versus United States, U.S. Supreme Court, 1943. Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen, where private corporate commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, and securities checks is concerned. For purposes of suit, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from the government. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. And here's the front page of the channel and the arrow is pointing at the bell. When you click on the bell, a pop-up will come up and uh, with a check where you bought, check a box uh, saying you want to be notified. Um, anyways, back to the topic at hand. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases meaning the same system and jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law. To distinguish it from the law of nature and international law, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Um, and this is a cite from uh, a book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court, and it's in the case uh, Diet versus Turner. And by this uh, means, citizens' birth rights become of no effect, and their rights are reduced to the inferior character of statutory civil rights, mere legislative privileges. And again, that goes back to the civil law, right? And Roman law or municipal law. All statutes equals municipal law equals Roman law equals Roman cult. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of the municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. He's a bought and paid for a clerk. Courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency but only in a ministerial and not in a discretionary capacity. Again, uh, he's a bought and paid for clerk masquerading as a judge. Judges who become involved in the enforcement are mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. All statutes equals municipal law equals Roman law equals Roman cult. It is impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. All jurisdictional facts supporting claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. That's U.S. Supreme Court. All statutes equals municipal law equals Roman law equals Roman cult. And now uh, announcing a subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International, the recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 a month because it avoids the advertising only. Originally, when I set up this channel, this other channel, the uh, I was planning on having exclusive content. Uh, but then after thinking about it, there's not much that I want to have exclusively on there because my agenda is to expose these New World Order Satanists uh, and their fraud and deception uh, for everyone's benefit. And so... Uh, there's not very much that I'm going to have on there exclusively. I do have a video on how to do affidavits and, uh, and a video on, um, on a, the Arlington private information share, but uh, that's it. 
So far, I'm, I'll probably have some more stuff, but right now the only thing I can guarantee is that it avoids advertising. And um, currently I'm publishing five videos a week. If you want to subscribe as a means of making a donation, uh, that's appreciated. And uh, uh, certainly $1.99 is a modest donation, or even, what, $24 a year is a modest donation. But, you know, a lot of people chip in a little bit, and it doesn't take long to add up, and it's appreciated. Anyways, um, I, some people had trouble finding the channel, and so a link to the channel is at the bottom. And uh, once I get a certain level of subscribers, then I'll be able to have a customized URL, but right now um, I can't. And so uh, that's where it goes. Uh, anyways, back, oh, there is uh, the front page of the channel showing a link to the channel at the top again. And uh, some people uh, uh, sent me a $1.99 donation, and I uh, contacted them by email to ask them if that was supposed to be a donation or if they wanted me to subscribe them to the channel because the reason I mention that is that I have absolutely no control over subscribers. I can't even see all the subscribers. I can see some of them, but I can't see them all. And so uh, the point being is that if you want to subscribe, you got to click on that Start Free Trial button, and they're probably YouTube is probably going to set up payment arrangements or who knows what. So uh, you're going to have to do it that way. I have no control over that at all. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Um, so uh, the term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property or cargo. And the term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fair fee rate, charge, or other consideration, or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. And that's Title 18, United States Code, Section 31. So the question is, do you have a motor vehicle? I know I don't. And um, many people think that, uh, I mean, when you go and register it, then, uh, then you're basically saying that. Anyways, and now another little uh, diversion, an advertisement. Check out my other videos. Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1, 2, and 3, Do It Yourself, How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service, Martial Laws Here, Do It Yourself, No Income Tax, Do It Yourself, Estoppel Certificates, Everything is an Illusion. Void Judgments, Do It Yourself, Kangaroo Courts 1 through 9. Uh, anyways, there's no common law crimes in the United States. There's no common law offenses against the United States. Only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command are crimes. And uh, that's uh, U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and this is the same thing in Texas. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and then the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. So again... Uh, um, that's evidence that we're under martial law. There's no common law crimes. Everything's an admiralty. A writ of error doth not lie upon a sentence in admiralty, but an appeal. That's a cite from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, under the definition of admiralty. But they're citing Coke in his uh, uh, book four, The Institutes and the Laws of England. That goes back to the 1500s. That's why it's called a court of appeals. Appeals are in admiralty. It's the same thing that precipitated the War of Independence. This is exactly the same thing. And now uh, another little diversion. Cubeyard.com. For great custom websites, domain names, and hosting, go to Cubeyard.com. Use coupon code CY172 for 20% off your first order. Cubeyard.com. Your source for websites, domain names, and hosting. And statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use, the exercise of law marshal and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter. We saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. And so that's taken from the causes and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. And this is a cite from uh, the book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. And he says the same thing as 
this slide and the causes and necessities for taking up arms, except he says it in a little bit different way. In the meantime, civil law was the form of law imposed in the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law. To have superior equity is to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is a law, then it follows its own course rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. And so he's saying basically the same thing what they said in the causes and necessities for taking up arms. And, uh, and the Declaration of Independence is full of this stuff. Uh, if you understand, the Declaration of Independence is basically a list of grievances. And some of the grievances, uh, you had the preamble and then you had the list of grievances. And these are just some of the many grievances that are listed. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, that's martial law, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies, that's martial law. He's abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. That's martial law for protecting them by mock trial. That's martial law. And here's another cite from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A. H. Ellett in the U of the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. Congress, claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions, imposed martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an extension of military and municipal jurisdiction of Congress. But where's the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, etc., etc., etc. No common law equals martial law. See, the Texas and other American states are under a military occupation video. See, the Alberta and other Canadian states are under a military occupation video. See, the martial law is here video. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute, uh, where an action is founded entirely upon a statute, and the only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture. Such action is a penal action. Statutes equals contract equals Roman cult. The words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense. Okay, so there's some certain words that we're using here as penal and penalty and offense. The word, uh, the noun penalty is defined forfeiture or to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. It's a contract. The words forfeit and penalty are substantially synonymous. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute and brought for the sole purpose sole object of recovering a penalty or forfeiture imposed as punishment for a specific offense, while a remedial action is one brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. A penal action is a civil suit brought for recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. Such actions are civil actions, on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, and on the other to actions for private injuries in which the party agreed may by statute recover punitive damages. You know, that's what these Satanists do, is they take some evil bad person and, uh, and, and set a precedent, and then they use that precedent any way they want. And uh, for an example, uh, the IRS, before uh, Al Capone was put in jail for tax evasion, they didn't put anybody in jail for tax evasion. And then they set their precedent with Al Capone that everybody was cheering over, and now they use it and put anybody they feel like in jail over it. And so, uh, uh, anyways, so statutes equals contract equals Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? But individuals, when acting as representatives of a collective group, cannot be said to be exercising their personal rights and duties, nor be entitled to purely personal privileges. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges of the artificial entity or association over uh, which they are agents or officers, and they are bound by its obligations. So when you stand up in that kangaroo court, and you say that you, they ask you, are you the name, and you say yes, then... You just agreed to a contract, okay? It's all consent, okay? It's all consent. I just can't say that enough. They know that you're the king, 
and they are getting you into a little contract. They are traitors. They are involved in sedition and treason. Uniform commercial code equals unidroid equals Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. And that's Uniform Commercial Code 1-206 presumptions. And the Uniform Commercial Code is controlled and regulated by the Unidroit Statute, which is a United Nations Unidroit is actually about 100 yards from the Holy See and the Roman cult. Uh, in an action with respect to an instrument, the authenticity of an authority to make each signature on the instrument are admitted unless specifically denied in the pleadings. If the validity of a signature is denied in the pleadings, the burden of establishing validity is on the person claiming validity, but the signature is presumed to be authentic and authorized unless the action is to enforce the liability of the purported signer and the signer. Uh, and anyways, so the point is that they forge your signature onto a contract. This is Uniform Commercial Code 3.308. Uh, uh, and they forge your signature onto a contract, and then they presume it's valid. And the Uniform Commercial Code is all these courts operate, or these so-called courts operate under the Uniform Commercial Code, under martial law. The following rules apply in an action on a certificated security. They sell these, uh, they securitize it and sell it on Wall Street. Uh, the following rules apply in an action to, on a certificated security against the issuer. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, each signature on a security certificate or in a necessary endorsement is admitted. If the effectiveness of a signature is put in issue, the burden of establishing effectiveness is on the party claiming under the signature, but the signature is presumed to be genuine or authorized. That's Uniform Commercial Code 8.114. And so Uniform Commercial Code equals Unidroit equals Roman cult. That's, this is all coming from the Roman cult. Every taxpayer is assessed to K trust, having sufficient interest in preventing abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. Uh, that's in Re Bolins, 1912. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And that's a summary of five pages of the congressional record dated June 13, 1967. Uh, uh, Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligation to pay income tax unless the defendant can establish he is not a citizen of the United States the IRS possesses authority to attempt to determine his federal tax liability and that's United States of America versus William M Slater and so and this is taken from the uh, D.C. Code, an act to establish a code of law for the District of Columbia, uh, located at 31 Stat 1432, the legal estate to be in the Sestake use. And this is more stuff from the D.C. Code, uh, which was approved March 3, 1901, by the 56th Congress. And this is uh, located at 31 Stat 1189, and this is Section 2, right up at the very front. And be it further enacted that in the interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed. Namely, the third, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. And this is more stuff in the D.C. Code uh, located at 31 Stat 1230. So you're talking 1189, 1230. So you're talking so far, I mean, you're talking um, uh, that's 1130. That's 41 pages later in the statutes at large. And, um, and it talks about Section 252, the presumption of death. And so I'm not going to read it, but it gives them the ability to presume you're dead. That's exactly what it is and what this does. And uh, we're going to go into, we're going to show some stuff that uh, a little bit later, showing that they use these statutes to make all sorts of presumptions. And this is Title 15, United States Code, Section 44, in the definitions section. Statutes equals contract equals Roman cult. 
did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? A corporation shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, incorporated or unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members and has shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest, and, and it has the same definition except it doesn't have shares of capital stock or certificates of interest. And so that's what a corporation is. And, and that's when I first, the first time I took the IRS to the Supreme Court, I, I said they're converting me into this uh, Title 15 United States Code, Section 44, Unincorporated Corporation, and uh, they waived their right to respond, the U.S. Department of So-Called Justice, which said, okay, so what? We know about that. And this is uh, uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, Volume 2, under the definition of Mort Main, and it says, Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. They devised, uh, for when they were driven all of all their former holds, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted, not to themselves directly, but the nominal fee fees to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use and receiving the actual profits while a season of the land remained in the nominal fee fee who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, that's the Roman cult, folks, and that's still to this day, to be bound in conscience to account to assess the use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusses the, mount, the foundation of modern conveyancing. And it's still a foundation of modern conveyancing, and they just assume everybody is a SESTA-K trust. And now my contact information, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My in, uh, email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profiles are Sovereign Living and Sovereignty International. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group on Facebook, Sovereignty International, is being deleted. It takes time to ban 17,000 people off your group, and I'm not going to let Facebook profit but from my hard work. Uh, my Yahoo private group is administering your public servants, and my Google private group is administering your public servants. And follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. So this is a letter from the Georgia Department of Driver Services. Remember, we were talking about presumptions and how you're presumed to be dead under the D.C. Code. Well, this is going to go into it a little bit more. And the, the part that I'm going to talk about is the top of this page. The statute creates a rebuttable presumption of residency for anyone who meets the following criteria. And, and this is the bottom of the letter signed by Jennifer Adams, who was the general counsel. And this is the text that I want to talk about. The statute creates a rebuttable presumption of residency for anyone who meets the following criteria. However... So, no such person shall be considered a resident for purposes of this chapter unless such person is either a United States citizen or an alien with legal authorization from the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service. So they presume that you're one of the slaves. And, and so are you one of the slaves? The Sestic Trust, you want to be responsible for the Roman cult Sestic Trust? State citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. That means by a statute, none of these statutes apply to state citizens. That's U.S. Supreme Court, Twining versus New Jersey, 1908. State citizenship is a vested substantial property right, and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights. You are either the king or you're the slave. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? Either you're the king or the slave. Everything is on presumption. Under martial law, the presumption is that you're a slave. If we, the people, take our government back, then the presumption will change. When the martial law ends, the presumption will be that you're the king. And, and it's either one or the other. So right now, the presumption is that you're the slave. 
and either you give them evidence of the slave or you did not defeat their presumption that you're the slave. See the do-it-yourself uh, estoppel certificates video. See the everything is an illusion video. See the do-it-yourself assert your status video. See the do-it-yourself affidavit declaration video. Again, either they, uh, under martial law, they presume you're the slave, and uh, uh, under common law, they presume you're the king. And, and there's nothing in between. Either you're the king or you're the slave. And, and you have to, uh, either the people as a group need to take back our government, in which case the courts will presume that you're the king, and either, or we can do it individually. And that's why you see these other videos. Anyways, that's the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, everything is by consent. It's all self-inflicted. Do you know who you are? Either you're a state citizen or you're a federal citizen. Either you're the king, that's a state citizen, or you're a slave, that's a federal citizen. And there's nothing else. Either you're the king or you're a slave. Do you know who you are? Thanks for watching, and, uh, and spread the word. Have a great day.